it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio. Welcome to part two of my Love Summer Art Mixed Media Canvas. The process was long enough that I needed to break it into two videos, so if you haven't seen part one yet, I will link it up there in the corner and you can go take a look at it first. Or not, <laughs> you can choose, but I will link it anyway. So at this point, I'm now working on my focal points and here's my little flip-flops. I started by painting them with the primary yellow uh, DecoArts fluid paint and now I'm stamping again using a one inch foam brush to apply the paint to my stamps so that they don't get too yucky and I'm just making like a floral pattern all over the base of the flip-flops and then I'm painting the um, tops which I cut off magenta the um, printout of these flip-flops will be linked in this video as well in case you missed it in the other one if you would like to make your own flip-flops and then I'm touching up my other pieces using the fluid acrylics where they're not as bright as I want I'm cleaning them up a little with those with a brush so I just kind of I keep using different products I'm using the India inks I'm using the fluid acrylics I'm using the <laughs> this and that and this and that until I get a look that I'm satisfied with sometimes I throw in the pit pins or the Posca pins or whatever until I get the depth of color that I want because you know I'm a, gr a bright 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 color person I like the bright colors and so I just keep applying paint and markers and whatever I have at hand until the colors are as bright as I want especially for a summer project they need to be bright you got your bright sun you got your bright colors so that's what I'm doing I had a little bit of a mix up there on my sunglasses there was some smeary 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 parts and so I decided to go over those with a little bit of gesso so I can clean it up and while I'm at it I'm just using the rest of the gesso that I put out or it might have been white acrylic not sure anyway whatever it is <laughs> I think it was gesso <laughs> I'm using those to highlight a little bit just for fun because there was extra okay now comes the interesting part I missed the part where I where I cleaned up my line right there where the pool and the deck are separated with a little bit of gesso and now I'm gonna do glazes and glazes are when you make a very thin paint using some type of a medium and you can use glazing medium because that's what it's for but I didn't have any glazing medium so I'm using the liquid matte um, medium this is a very liquid thin product as opposed to the one that I like to use for collage which is a gel so I sometimes use this for thin papers like napkins and things like that if I'm doing collage with those type of papers um, but basically all I do is just I'm taking the a heavier body acrylic now I could have done this with the liquid acrylics I just I'm not sure why I didn't I just grab these and I'm mixing it mixing with the paint and the matte medium together and in this in the first case I was also mixing in a little black to make it deeper and then just going over the whole thing it doesn't obliterate what's below it just makes it starts building up a thin coat of layer of paint and I'll switch colors and do different colors and it makes a lot of depth in what you're doing not changing the mixed media part of it you know where it looks all all the textury stuff in the background like you're used to with mixed media but just kind of toning it down and bringing it together and making it more uniform so this is something I've started doing lately I hadn't been doing glazes you know that much but I really like how it works and it certainly works really well on this project so now I've got some brown paint and I'm doing the same process again deepening the edges all the way around the pool deck so I made like a deeper area where the deck is meeting the pool and then now I'm making a uh, deeper area where the pool 
where the deck is meeting the pool. <laughs> Did that make sense? I don't know. At this point, I'm a little bit crazy, I think. Editing two videos back to back. I'm not sure what I said in the other one versus what I said in this one. Uh, it's getting a little bit weird. I don't usually do this. So I'm going to put it all the way around and then I'm going to put the lighter part in the middle and I'm going to make some other color glazes. Just I'm just going to keep doing this till I like it. And of course, not leaving out the edges. I'm going over the edges as well to make sure that everything is uniform. Now I think I'm going back to a lighter blue again. Not sure what I'm doing. I know it's more glazes. Oh, I guess I'm making a deeper uh, turquoise to go around the outer edges of the canvas to in the pool area. That's what I'm doing. I didn't like the black blended in, so I added in a darker green with the turquoise. So I think that looks better. I wish that black wasn't on there, but I can't get it off now. <laughs> and then I'm mixing some uh, saffron yellow with a little bit of orange and doing that glaze over the center part of the deck and then I'll put a little bit of a reflection of that color into the pool as well where the Sun would be shining on the pool giving a little bit of a warm couple spots and then my final one is going to be titanium white just a little bit of that to lighten up and that really brings my whole thing together it really like calms everything down smooths everything out and makes it more like what I was going for I guess I don't know okay so uh, once that is all dry I'm gonna start collaging on my focal images and I'm using Liquitex gel matte medium it's kind of like a pasty stuff and I put it on both the canvas and the paper with a palette knife and then scrape all the bubbles out and smooth everything out to get it to lay down flat this paper was buckled but by the time I get it all um, you know mushed up with glue it's fine it, it lays down perfectly flat and I'm gonna do this with all my pieces and I'm gonna cut that part out because it's just boring <laughs> so everything's on there I went and printed out some words using a crayon type script off my printer and I ran them twice through the printer so that they would be as dark as I could get them because I knew with this scratchy font I wasn't going to be able to really darken them up with a pen because it's you can't see it so much in the video but when you see it up close it's very scratchy it's supposed to look like a crayon crayon writing so it's it's not smooth so that worked out really well to run it through twice and make it a little bit darker and I want these I, I cut these out very irregularly and I want them to look like um, old weathered wood signs like you would see you know hanging on a fence somewhere so I've got my black Stabilo all pencil and I'm going around the edges to add my shadows but then I'm also letting my brush run over in areas to kind of like weather or distress that white paper and it's of course all sealed in with the matte medium and then I'm gonna go around every single thing with my Stabilo all and blend it out with my water brush every single thing and the reason that I do this is because this creates the feeling the visual feeling that it's not paper glued on it's it's part of the piece that's really it really makes a huge difference to do this whether you do it with a marker and blend it or whether you do it with a water soluble pencil of some sort watercolor pencil doesn't matter the effect is the same and it really makes a huge difference so I cut some of that out because it's repetitive and um, trying to keep this video shorter this this whole process 
of making this canvas took about four hours. Um, I'd say around four hours. So cutting it into two 20 minute videos <laughs> is a little bit tricky. But I think you're getting the idea of everything that I'm doing and you could do, you know, do it yourself if you want to. So this is a Pit Artist brush pin and I'm just adding a little bit of shadows with it. Now that all the paper is sealed in with the matte medium, I can blend with my finger. It's not absorbing the ink anymore because it's all sealed up. So I can add um, shadows and colors and blend with my finger, which I enjoy doing with this type of ink. The ink has a feeling to it. It's almost a little bit slippery or something. I don't know. And then that was a Posca pin there that you saw really briefly um, to highlight and punch up that orange around the outside of the glasses because it was looking a little bit dull. And then back to the pit pins. <laughs> Remember I put a little bit of gesso there and I needed to um, color those back in on the the frame, the, what are those things that go over the ears? You know, the things that go over the ears on sunglasses. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> and then I've got my fine tip black Posca pen and I'm going to outline everything. The black marks that, the black outlines that I made originally with my pit pins when I drew these, of course, have gotten dulled by adding all the paints and inks and stuff over the top. So now I'm detailing it back out again by adding the black lines again, which seems redundant, but yet makes a huge difference. So it's just something you gotta do. If you're fussy, like me, you gotta put your black lines back on. And I'm glad that I cut the flip-flops apart because that worked out really well. If I'd ha had to try to paint those with the the top parts on, it just really wouldn't have worked. And I flip back and forth between the pins and the marker, just kind of, you know, how you do. <laughs> adding some more shadows, adding the black lines. I'll outline this whole thing and then I'll go to the sun lotion and do it and back and forth, back and forth. I guess I don't just do one thing all at once. You'd think I would, but I don't. So that's the Posca pen again, outlining. Now the sun lotion is not looking good at all. Uh, it's very, it still just has the the marker on it that was really splotchy. And this is my top layer, so I know I'm not going to be putting anything else over the top of it. So I just go ahead and use my Kiritaki, um, no, yeah, Thames and Gamby or whatever, <laughs> watercolors, anyway, they're watercolors. I'm going to seal this, so that'll it'll be sealed in when I'm done. And so I just figured I would use those to quickly make that sun lotion bottle look better by adding some colors. Sorry, had to yawn. <laughs> I really like that this watercolor set has white. It really helps me out a lot from, for what I do. They're not really they don't really have the watercolor feeling so much. They feel kind of like a, a combination between watercolor and acrylic. They're interesting paints. I like them. Okay, so that's looking better. Now I've got to, of course, outline it and all that. Oh, but I guess I'm going to let it dry first. So now I'm using my white fine tip Posca pin and doing the highlights because I like to do that. I like the way it looks. I like the way it makes things pop a little bit. So I'm going to do that, of course. If you've watched my videos, you know I do it. <laughs> Got to use that white. And the Poscas are my favorite for this type of a thing. Some people like to use jelly rolls or whatever they are. The, uh, the pen that's more like a 
ballpoint pen, but I prefer these. They really will write over anything. And while they're wet, they'll blend a little bit if you want to. So. Now back to the bottle. We gotta do all the outlining with the black. But we are getting close to finishing, I think. Oh no, we're not. <laughs> I forgot I added a whole bunch more stuff to it. <laughs> I am a bit sleepy. <laughs> it's getting late. Okay, the bottle's pretty much done. I think I've outlined everything. I think I'm going to add some more white on the tops of the little signs. Yeah, there we go. Hmm, now what shall I do, I say? Oh yeah! Sequins! <laughs> You know you're in trouble when you buy dollar packs of sequins at the dollar store and then you have to go back and buy little sorters for at the dollar store for the sequins. <laughs> I sorted these and that's how come I thought of them. I sorted these this morning. So um, I have some stuff that's basically, it's the Mod Podge version of Glossy Accents. It's like a um, it's designed to make something look real shiny, but it's great for gluing on sequins too. So I just put on a bunch of dots and then I've got my little pick-me-up tool and I'm adding sequins to the flip-flop tops. Because, yeah, there's really flip-flops with sequins. I even have some, so you gotta have your bling sometimes. And then I decide, well, you can't just have them on there, so I decide to put some little highlights in the pool because, you know, the, the sun glimmers off the water and makes sparkles. So I thought that my turquoise and teal colored sequins would look good on there. Then I'm like, well, okay, I'm going to make the glasses shiny with my um, glossy s glue stuff because glasses are shiny. And then I put a little bit of glitter glue on the suntan lotion and a little sequin and then I'm like okay well I have some brown sequins so I'm gonna put those to balance everything out because why wouldn't you? I mean they're cool. So when I seal this I'm gonna have to come up with a sealing that doesn't dull the shine of those and that gets everything really good and sealed in, including the sequins. And then I decide that the towel needs some texture. This should have been done a lot earlier. <laughs> I wanted to make it look like a towel, so I'm using a stencil brush, which is like a very stiff, flat bristle. And I'm just using it dry and then just pouncing some white on to kind of give the idea that it's furry or terry cloth type of a feeling. And that's pretty much the last thing I do. I think I add a few little spatters to the towel at the end and then that's pretty much it for this canvas. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave me a comment, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with other people. When you do these things, it helps me because YouTube thinks that, that if you like it, then some other people might like it too, and they share it with them. So here's your close-ups, and enjoy. Thanks. Bye-bye.